Hello, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts and today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own pigment. Now, this is a colour that I made about three months ago and I've left it this long to make sure that it's quite colour fast and it really does seem to be very, very colour fast. They work really, really well. I did quite a lot of experiments on different things before I got to these ones and I love how they've come out. So stick around to see how I'm going to be making those. The other thing is they are really cheap to make and they're going to save you a lot of money because some of the opaque pigments that you buy can be quite expensive. They're good but they're expensive and this might help. Now I don't need to make pigments with my mica powders because I don't want to have that sitting around when I can just put mica powder in, but sometimes I do need a colored pigment that's not mica powder. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and ring that bell so you get notifications on when my next videos come out. I'll also provide the links to everything that I'm using today in the description below so you can find easily what I'm using and what I'm doing. So what I'm using here is a piece of Perspex and some plastic painter knives to mix all this on. You could do it on a silicon mat, but I find this is a much easier to clean up afterwards. So this is concentrated powdered food coloring that I'm using here. And it works really, really well, believe it or not. What I would suggest is you get three or four scoops out and use part A of your resin to mix this in with. And you don't need much. Less is more to start with. I would certainly recommend not adding too much because you don't want it too runny. And you can always add more anyway as you go on. And then just bring it into itself. Make sure you're wearing a mask and a respirator because this is quite dusty and also you are using resin as well don't forget and make sure you've got gloves on and old clothes because believe me if you get powdered color on your hands or on your clothes it is going to stain it does wash out but it is going to stain so carefully mixing all this in as you can see I'm doing here and bringing it all into the middle you'll be surprised actually that this will all be taken up by that little bit of resin that I put in there what I do is I do this for about three or four minutes making sure I get a nice smooth paste and then if I need to add more resin like I am here part A I just add a little bit more and bring that all in and look how quick I'm going my god I'm like Billy Whiz I had to speed it up once you're content and once you're happy that it's very well mixed in and it's nice and smooth to scrape it off and this is what I like about this piece of plastic it's much easier to scrape off than it would be on a silicon mat and then I just pop it into a clean little pot. I got these, uh, I'll show you the link to where I got these below. They were really cheap and I use them for lots of different things. And then scoop it all up, pop it into your pot. Don't leave any behind. As much as you can get off makes cleaning up afterwards a little bit easier. And there we go, we've got it all scraped in. I do clean this up and it does clean up quite well with just a little bit of soapy water and a cloth and as you can see I've sprayed it on there and now I'm just using a bit of paper towel and always clean it off before you make the next colour. When I'm making colours like this I tend to make several at a time as you can see I've got some titanium white here or titanium oxide which is really a beautiful white to go with this to make the white and sometimes it's really difficult to get hold of a good white and I love the white that this makes. Same process, exactly the same process, I'm not going to show you the whole process again but this is a bit more resin because I tend to find that this one's a little bit more drier. I'd like to say a quick thank you to all my members, thank you for being a member, without you guys and the people that buy me coffees that I wouldn't be able to afford to keep running this channel so I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to become a member or you're interested in all the additional perks that you get for being a member, the link to that is in the description below. So there we go, as you can see this is a little bit runny and this is a better consistency. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what they all cure up like. So I've mixed some up and if you'd like to think about buying me a coffee just to say thank you and so that your name can go on my wall of fame here for, Mar uh, for April then the link to that is in the description. So I've mixed it all up as I would normally any other pigment in resin and pop that in and I'm going to show you how easy it mixes up and you only need a little bit of this. Now I use a lot of resin pigments so you maybe don't want to make as much as I've made but look how little a bit I put in there of the white. Look how simple it, it just mixes in beautifully. 
Just give that a bit of a stir around and then you're ready to cast it. And it doesn't cause any reaction to the resin whatsoever. And the fact that you've used a part A from one resin, I have used part A from one particular brand of resin, resin color. I use resin color all the time, which is available in the UK. Again, link in the description. Love their resin. But I can use that tiny amount that I use there in any resin and it's not really going to have too much or any effect on it. Epoxy resins I'm talking about there. So just fill this in and let that cure up. As you can see, no change to the consistency. It doesn't change the curing time or anything. There's only a tiny amount in there. It's very, very concentrated. And what I do love about this color is it is absolutely an amazing white. It's lovely and clear. Make sure you put your lids on nice and tight because if not, like any resin, it will dry out and it will go off over time. So don't leave it too long before you use it. I keep it for about six to eight months. I'll let this cure up and then we can come back to it. Well, these have cured now and as you can see, they've cured up quite nicely and they demold easily. I mean, they're, they're no different than any other resin pigment. So there's that one. This is royal blue. This is the red, and I think the red one always comes out lovely. And white, and now white is a hard one sometimes to get hold of, a good opaque white. But this opaque white, I think, is just beautiful. There we go. The green. and the yellowy colour. Now, I like them. I think they come out really well. You can get lots of different colours in food colouring powders. You can also mix up the food colouring powders to make up your own colours as well, if you wish. They are very stable as far as I've, my tests have done. So I think it's a success and it is a lot cheaper than buying ready-made pigment colours paste. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be really interested to know what you think. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and ring the bell, the bell, so you get the notifications. I'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody that's bought me a coffee whose names will appear on my board coming up. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee, then check out the link in the description along with the link to all the products that I've used. Take care, enjoy your resin. Bye.